Welcome graduates. Oops, sorry. Let me take my mask off. Sorry. Welcome graduates, family, friends, faculty, and college administration to the Quinsigamy Community College Radiologic Technology Pinning Ceremony. I'm Sue Whittier. I'm the program director. Um, we are so pleased to be having this pinning in person. This is the first time I've seen some of you guys since last March, right? In real life, right? Um, and we're so thrilled that all of you could join us today. <clears throat> I'm going to start because I wanted to say a couple of words. And what I didn't want to say, the words that I did not want to say in my speech, was going to be unprecedented, uncertain times, the students had so many barriers, we need to be resilient, and we all need to get through this together, right? We're tired of that. I've said that to you a hundred times already. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little story of my past, and it was hard not for me to include those in my story. So when I was about 13 or 14, we were going on a class trip to nature's classroom. Some of you might have been there before yourself. Um, I was placed in a team with six or seven kids, um, and our task was to get over a 12-foot barrier. Um, so we were like, wow, this is a big barrier in our path. We have to work together to get over this. Um, no one gave us directions. No one gave us instructions. We had to figure it out ourselves. Um, as we stood in front of the wall, we all summed up the situation, and we said, well, this is unprecedented. We've never encountered this before. Um, and we were clearly uncertain of how we're going to get over this wall. Um, well, all the tall, strong kids stood there and said, oh, this is going to be easy. We're just going to run and jump over the wall, right? And um, uh, funny, I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to do that. So um, we all stood there looking at each other. Um, and suddenly all the eyes were on me. Clearly, I was the weakest link in this group, okay? So physically, I may be the weakest link. But what they didn't know about, know about me, um, well, maybe they did, maybe they did, is I'm a little bit nerdy, and I thought, we're not going to have enough acceleration and velocity because the amount of force acting on the body mass, um, they didn't have enough power and momentum to get over this wall. Does those words sound familiar to you? So those words, if you guys don't know, chapter one of their physics book, they have to know the formulas and how to calculate them. Um, so, so I knew the only way to get over this was we're gonna have to work as a team. Um, we're gonna have to come up with some sort of lever system, a pole vault, somehow we're gonna have to get over this wall. Um, we're gonna have to believe in the facts of science, I thought. Um, so I began to tell him my idea. We're going to put one tall, strong kid over the wall, one tall, strong kid on this side of the wall, and then all the little ones are going to have to boost over the wall, and then we'll all be on the other side of the wall, and we can lift the last tall, strong kid over. That's how we were going to get over the wall. And then suddenly everyone said, oh, you're right. That, that's what's going to happen. We're going to have to look to science, um, and we're going to have to work together. As this class, more than any other class in the history of the Rad Tech program, has come to realize um, it, it takes teamwork from everybody. Um, you've had to uh, endure incredible adjustments. You had various regulations of, imposed on you. Some of them were, I don't know, at some point, Pat, daily. A new regulation came out daily. Um, and you had to be flexible, you had to be resilient, you had to be open-minded to other people's ideas, um, you had to listen to each other, and with all of that together, you have come to proving to us there is no barrier that you cannot overcome. You have successfully reached your goals. Some of you have chosen to continue your education, others are going to earn additional credentials in CT, CAT scan, interventional radiography, cardiac catheterization, and mammography. Um, many of you have accepted positions in various hospitals. We're all very proud of you. We're proud of the way you maintained your composure throughout the past year, because as you know, many times I started class and I said, okay, just let me have it, right? It was just an open session. 
Um, I can honestly say I remember Holly DeRoyan saying, Sue, I'm a little salty, I can't go to clinical, if I remember those words correctly. I'm a little salty was her words. Um, you have gained experiences that no other group of students have gained. You have seen a field hospital erected in your own city, not once, but twice. Um, you can don and doff PPE like no other group of students we have ever had. Um, you have a thorough understanding of infection control, viruses, and you have seen how our country have, has handled mass vaccinations. You have a bright future in healthcare, and you are now going to be the leaders for the future of radiology. So congratulations, class of 2021. And now I'd like to present Dr. James Keene, the Vice President of Academic Affairs. Thank you, and good morning. How exciting it is for the college community today to gather for this pitting ceremony. And as said earlier, thank God we're doing it in person, which is great to have you with us gathered today. On behalf of the faculty and the staff, our president, Dr. Bedraha, it's my pleasure to bring welcoming greetings to you as we begin this important ceremony today. For our graduates, I promise I have two thoughts and one last assignment that I'm allowed to give you as Vice President of Academic Affairs. First, the two points. First today, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for choosing your vocation. Thank you for responding to what you've been called to do in the world, in our community, and in your life. Thank you for, for, the, for the vocation that you've selected that will bring compassion, that will bring healing, that will bring hope to all those that you serve. One of my favorite writers, Thomas Burton, has a great quote in regards to vocation. He says, Discovering vocation does not mean scrambling towards some prize just beyond reach, but accepting the treasure of true self I already possess. Vocation does not come from a voice out there calling you to be something I am not. It comes from a voice in here calling me to be the person I was to be, to fulfill the original selfhood given to me at birth. For students that choose healthcare professions, you choose a vocation. You respond to a call. It's not about money or prestige or title, but it's about helping and bringing healing. So today we congratulate you for accepting this difficult but yet rewarding vocation that you've chosen and the way that you'll serve the community as you go forth from Quinsigaman Community College. My second thought today is to remember what you receive today through the pinning and through your education as you go out to begin to serve, is that today is really about a license to serve and to serve the community and to what you bring. And for sure you bring expertise and you bring knowledge and you bring all that you've learned this time at Quinn Sigmund Community College and the sites where you did your clinical experiences, but you bring a lot more. When I was in graduate school, one of the, the areas that I studied in, in an early graduate program was, was uh, pastoral counseling. And in that graduate degree, we too got sent out to different organizations for externship clinical type experiences. And we were assigned to those experiences. You didn't select, but you sort of were assigned by faculty in the program. And some of the assignments were very exciting. They were missionary work in foreign countries. They were working in prisons doing counseling. And the, the card that I pulled, or the assignment that I was pulled the first year, was to work as a pastoral counselor in a hospital. And the upper class students kind of said to me, like, oh, you drew the short straw. And I said, what do you mean? They said, well, honestly, in hospitals, families are visiting, people are there with the patients, you're going to spend more time in the coffee shop than you are up with patients. Quite, quite honestly, you're not as needed there. So I ventured off into this externship experience at this hospital for the year of my program. Not quite sure what to expect. But there's two things specifically that I learned. Number one, when families move on and the patient is there alone, fear sets in. Fear sets in about the unknown, about the unknown of future, the unknown of the disease, the unknown of treatment, and the unknown of this foreign experience that they're about to venture into. 
So yes, there is support at times during the day of, in a hospital stay, but there's a lot of time where patients are afraid and alone. And the second part that I learned, which ties into that, is that it's not the doctor that brings hope. Who I learned from in the hospital that year in my externship experiences were from all the nurses and technicians and folks that came in and cared for the patient. They're the ones that held the hand. They're the ones who answered the same question five times in five different ways to help the patient understand and to remove some of that fear. So when I share today about this license to serve, yes, you're gonna serve with the expertise that you've learned through your academic study. But what you really have a license to do is to bring hope, to bring compassion, to bring feeling, to bring understanding to that person who's afraid. Whether it's an outpatient, inpatient, working in a hospital, working at an offsite location, whether it's five minutes or five hours, you bring hope and compassion through the expertise that you bring as practitioners in this field. So today, I, my two thoughts are one, thank you for accepting this vocation. And secondarily, remember, it's a license to bring hope to those who are scared, to those who are alone, to those who might be moving into the unknown. So thank you for those two areas. And last is your last homework assignment that you will have, and I promise this is my last point this morning. To get you where you are today, there are so many people. There are people who guided you probably in the K through 12 system. There are role models out in the healthcare field that inspired you. There are parents and grandparents, cousins, nephews, friends who supported you throughout your studies, who allowed you to miss key of family events because you had a study, because you had work to do, you had clinical placements. Your parents who probably for the last 15 months were petrified to hear that QCC was continuing, your education was continuing and that you'd be back on site, back out in externships, and the worry concern that they had in doing that. And then there are people who are the amazing faculty who in, in, in two week period flipped over the curriculum, figured out how to do this remotely with the goal of safety first and helping our students continue their program. You have an academic dean who wrestled with administration for the last 15 months to not only make this pinning ceremony happen today in person, but to ensure we were moving safely, that you were being prepared with your academic standards as high as ever, but using unique technologies and abilities to do that. So you have an amazing village of support. Your assignment is to do this. Today, I hope you go out and you celebrate and you have nice lunches and dinners and you celebrate this day. But before you go to bed tonight, to the students, I say this. Log on to your email account and send a few emails. Thank the people that supported you these last few years, these last semesters, to get you where you are today. Whether it's somebody at a clinical site, if it's one of our outstanding faculty, whether it's your dean, whether it's your parents, a cousin, a friend, a peer that studied with you and helped you get the concepts that might be difficult. But tonight, before you shut that light off and go to sleep, take a minute to thank somebody or somebodies who've helped you get to where you are today because none of us achieve success without the support of so many. So once again, congratulations. You make us proud. You will always be part of the QCC family. And we look forward to all the amazing things that you'll do in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Keene. And now I think Pat Schmall, he is the Dean of Healthcare. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Keene. That's gonna be a tough act to follow. Um, so I, I just uh, wanted a, a moment just to uh, thank the students and to see you uh, sitting here is, is, uh, brings such joy because when you started, things were normal, right? Freshman year, I think the biggest complaint was parking downtown. Things were going along fine. March hit, we, we you know, as uh, Dr. Keene said, the faculty did an amazing job. And then you guys responded by learning remotely and gave us time to figure out how to get your clinicals and then working with us out at the clinicals. I truly want to thank you guys because you were the first group that came downtown in the labs. Remember, we had the X's. Don't, you can't stand here. You, if you stand on the left side of the corridor, the, you know, the world is going to stop. The, the work that you guys did coming in early on downtown to show us that it was safe to come back, you guys stayed safe, you learned in the labs, that helped all our healthcare programs. 
the faculty, the amazing work the faculty did, your advisory board, uh, Dr. Pothic, learning to go online with Zoom. You, it, it's just incredible work that you guys did. And so that's why I just w wanted to thank you uh, personally for me to, to help us get where we are today. And then also want to thank the families because I know it was probably the stress of COVID and then the stress of being at Quinsig. Everything was changing daily for you guys. To, to work with your students sitting beside you, your daughters, sons, um, thank you so much for doing that. And then uh, just to you know, echo what Dr. Keene said, just the, the work, you sitting here, thank the people that got you there. It is so important. And I just want to talk about the future. Um, uh, clinical compliance, right? The Castle Branch, you guys probably hate me for making you do Castle Branch. Rick Banks, his son, do, do you know, went through this program a couple of years ago. So Rick has been telling me all going through this, his son is a recent graduate, of all the success he's having, all the different opportunities. So I've been hearing, you know, of everything coming down, but it's amazing, as a graduate of Quinn Sig, it feels like weekly he's got new opportunities. There are so many things out there for you guys to take advantage of if you want it. So what I'm hoping is you guys are gonna, you, you've already shown me that you're incredible because what you've done. You're gonna keep working and you're gonna keep moving forward. Um, I, the faculty here, you'll see there's a lot of asterisks in the books about alumni of Quinsig. We need you to keep moving, keep getting your education so that you can come back in a few years and become part of the faculty and educate the next group. So thank you so much. Thank you for letting me sneak in. I truly appreciate all of what you've done and how you helped shape the School of Healthcare coming back early. So thank you. So, there we go. So each year the graduating class has the task of inviting a guest speaker to provide them with inspiring thoughts and words of wisdom um, as they embark on the world of healthcare. This year, the graduates have chosen someone who has had an, uh, a very inspiring career um, with many decades of service in the field of radiologic technology. Marge Genetic, clinical coordinator, has been an instrumental in providing students with the most comprehensive positioning skills in the field of radiologic technology. And she has been an inspiration to not just students, but faculty as well. So please let me, help me welcome Marge Genetic. Good morning, and welcome everyone to the 35th Annual Radiologic Technology Pinning Ceremony. It's great to see the graduates and your guests who have been there to support you through this journey of a lifetime. It goes without saying, it takes a village, especially during a pandemic. I want to thank the class of 2021 for asking me to say a few words and giving me the opportunity to brag about you one last time. I was touched by your invitation and admire you all so much. The pinning ceremony is a symbolic welcoming of newly graduated technologists into the radiologic technology profession. It's a well-deserved tribute to you for all the hard work you invested and the obstacles you overcame to become a radiographer. I think back to September 2019 when you arrived looking all professional in your uniforms. Some thinking, how hard can this be? You lay a patient on the table, move a camera over them, and ask them not to move. Fast forward a month or two later, I remember how the comments changed to, how am I going to learn all this? There's so much to know. Math, physics, medical terminology, positioning, patient care, radiation science, and all those clinical days we have to do, really, all this to take a picture? You were overwhelmed and scared, mostly of me, I think. I think way before the end of the first semester. But what you didn't know is that was exactly how you were supposed to be feeling. And just like many of the technologists before you, we were going to challenge you, and you would be okay. We found out pretty quick 
Gen Zs and millennials just don't give up. As time went on, we got to know you as a person in your academic and clinical abilities, your weaknesses and your strengths. The faculty and I thought, wow, this is a good group. They seemed to be pretty serious about their education. They were attentive in class, demonstrated good participation in labs and in the clinical setting. Other than trying to get them to laugh at our jokes, they looked like they were gonna be okay. We anticipated a good academic year. The semester ended and we went on Christmas break after taking the usual stressful exams to advance to the next semester. You came back even more prepared and ready to work hard. Little did you know the challenge of a lifetime was waiting just around the corner for all of us. You had adjusted to our teaching styles and we figured, and, and we figured out how you learned best. It was a win-win situation. We were anxious to start the new semester. January and February went smoothly, but then we started hearing some talk about a flu in another country. And before we knew it, it was spring break. A well-deserved time to regroup both personally and professionally, and we were all in. And so the story goes. We never returned to academia as we knew it. Everything changed in an instant. No labs, no clinical, no in-person classes. As scared and confused as you were, I want you to know that we were too. The rules changed daily, and sometimes even by the hour. It was a nightmare we all wanted to wake up from. You had a fear of not getting your education you were paying for, and we had a fear of not being able to find the ways to teach you the material you so deserve. We found ourselves fully immersed in the remote world, not by choice, and it was pretty scary. Probably harder for the faculty, as the students grew up on the web, they knew the language, they knew the terminology, and they knew how to find um, YouTube. Okay. Fortunately, when you're in the profession of radial arch technology, you always have a plan B, C, and sometimes D. It is second nature for rad techs to figure out a way to accomplish their goals personally and professionally. And so together we put in the hard work needed and discovered many wonderful sources of information and new ways of learning and teaching. Understanding this, you rose to the challenge and you did not let COVID keep you from being successful. It may have robbed us of our time and routine, but together we did it. We kicked COVID's butt big time. Through it all, you held fast, never really complaining, maybe whined a little, but did what needed to be done. So after two years of challenges, twists and turns, lots of quizzes, tests, and exams, 62 clinical competencies, several performance evaluations, and 192 clinical days, your requirements have been fulfilled and you have earned the 72 credits to graduate and become a radiologic technologist. You all worked so hard, sacrificed so much, and achieved the goal you set out for yourself two years ago, and for some, even longer than that. We are all so very, very proud of you and admire your tenacity. You completed a program that was difficult under normal circumstances, never mind a pandemic. You are truly amazing. We no longer thought this class was serious about their education. We knew it. Family and friends, please join me and the faculty, clinical instructors, in congratulating the unbelievable tech, radiologic technology COVID class of 2021. Okay. So I'm not giving COVID one more minute of our time. I'm glad it's almost over and grateful for all the new ways of teaching and learning we discovered along the way. Let's talk about your future. Graduates, you have now joined thousands of technologists in a profession that will enrich your life. 
It's not just a job, it's a career. And you can take it anywhere you want to go. Your two years of study are over, but it really is just the beginning of a wonderful journey with many learning experiences to come and along with professional and personal growth. By making the decision to go to the school to become a radiologic technologist, you have given yourself and your family a better life. You have the golden ticket, and I can't wait to see where it takes you. Radiology is a door to endless opportunities ahead of you. When I started in this profession many, 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 many years ago, I only had three paths I could follow, x-ray, radiation therapy, and nuclear medicine. They were all part of the x-ray department and part of my training. Within a few years, I witnessed the birth of many new technologies. First came cardiac cath, interventional, then mammography. Cath scan, ultrasound, and lithotripsy soon followed. MRI, PET scan, and now within the last 15 years, CR, DR, and AI, artificial intelligence, who knew? I can't imagine what the next 50 years will be like, but I wish I could be there with you. I guess I'll just have to be your professional guardian angel to sneak in. All these modalities, and I'm sure some new ones, will give you, the technologist, more choices to decide what are the path you might like to take in the future. You could also further your education by getting a bachelor's degree if you're interested in becoming an administrator or a master's degree to become an RPA, a radiology physician's assistant. Now that would have been my goal. RPAs essentially practice radiology medicine and under the supervision of a licensed radiologist like a nurse practitioner does for PCA. As an RPA, you will perform some of the duties of a radiologist like fluoro, biopsies, and also do some readings. There are so many options waiting for you when you are ready. Your future is bright and exciting. Know that you are an integral part of the, an important team made up of doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals that use their skills to contribute to a diagnosis to treat a medical condition. You are truly lifesavers and you are my unsung heroes. Honestly, I could go on and on about these young men and women, but my five minutes of fame are up. So before I leave, I just want to personally congratulate each and every one of you, and I want you to know how happy I am to have been part of your education. I know you will be successful in all your future endeavors because you have true grit. You lived and learned through a pandemic. Not many people can say that. I love diagnostic imaging, and I'm counting on you to keep it an honorable profession. Embrace the changes that will take place in your lifetime, and never be afraid to learn new technologies or grow with the profession. It's already a much better place because you are in it. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Marge. That was lovely. Now I would like to welcome Anthony Abate, your class president. First off, I'd like to thank the administration and our teachers as well for being able to give this pinning in person to us. Obviously, you know, we've been lacking that lately. Um, you know, what can I say? I remember when we went to orientation, we didn't know what to expect. You know, we were excited, scared, nervous. And even on that first day in lab, I can still remember Marge trying to teach us to detent, and a lot of us had trouble. And it was very frustrating, and I was like, I guess this isn't for me. But then, like everything we've done, over time we've gotten better. And, you know, i like to also thank, I remember my first day at clinical, I was so nervous, you know, watching the speed that the techs do everything at, and also just how they know what to do right off the bat. It was very nerve wracking, and I know I'm not the only one who felt that way. 
And, you know, I also remember how the first week or so they told us the technology is always changing. You don't know what to expect. You know, over the past 10 years, you've seen DR and CR. Little did we expect a pandemic. And obviously that really, you know, it worried me for a while because I didn't know if we were going to be able to finish on time. And we did. You know, we, we beat the odds. We got through it. And that's something to be very proud of, I feel like. You know, we had to really change everything that we were used to. I mean, I was excited about online classes at first, but then at the point it really was annoying because you didn't have the interactions with, you know, each other or the teachers. It was a lot more awkward to ask questions. Um, you, you know, you didn't have the ability to study before class or, you know, even just have social interaction. And it's something we as, you know, the world has been lacking for a while. And so being able to see everyone here, which I think this is the first time we've all seen each other in one place at one time in a while, it's very special. And so I'd just like to end this because I want it to be nice, short, and sweet with, you know, good luck to everyone. I know we're all going into different modalities, you know, CT, mammography, and uh, cath lab, everything. So all I gotta say is good job, we did it, and let's go pass the registry. So now we're gonna start the si uh, slideshow that Erica made.
awards today. Each year we do uh, an award for an outstanding student. Unfortunately, the student that was chosen this year is unable to be with us here today. Uh, her name is Madison uh, Bouchard. We'll miss her, but um, we're very proud of her. Congratulations to her. Um, QCC's Radiologic Technology Program is accredited by the Joint Review Committee on Education in Radiologic Technology. This review body offers a, what's called JCERT, J-R-C-E-R-T, Certificate of Excellence for outstanding performance in the radiologic sciences. But this is not an annual event. Instead, this award is bestowed on those occasions when students achieve the high standing and regard as shown by the year's recipient, this year's recipient. The qualities demonstrated by this graduate are many and quite remarkable. They include holding a class officer position as leader in class fundraising. She personally designed a radiologic technology decal to help support her class's financial goals. She has helped organize and decorate for the pinning. She is a leader at clinical where her skills shine. She treats every one of her patients with dignity and compassion. Her fellow students hold her in high regard. She is a hardworking student who does not accept mediocrity, but strives for excellence in every task she encounters. We are truly fortunate to have played a role in her professional development and that she will be a member of the radiologic technology profession. But it is her effort, skill, devotion, and severe, excuse me, sincere concern for all people she interacts with that has brought her to this honor today. Therefore, it is with great pleasure that I present the JRC CERT Certificate of Excellence to Holly DeRoyne. Would you reach under your seat? The award is um, taped to the bottom of your seat. It's kind of like Oprah. <laughs> Oprah gives things away under the seats. <laughs> Congratulations. And now it's time for soup. Do you want to ask things? Okay, it's time now. All right. Let me uh, get your names here. Okay. Okay, it's time for your family members to present you with your pins. This now signifies that you are an alumni of the QCC Radiologic Technology Program. Together, your faculty and clinical coordinators have tried to set an ethical standard of performance and attitude of professionalism for you to emulate. Please continue to um, consciously strive to maintain and elevate those standards from this moment forward. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, as I call the student's name, you are going to stand. The person who is going to pin you is going to stand with you. You're going to step out into the aisle um, and photographer back there is going to take your picture, okay? Okay. Anthony Abate. <laughs> Lauren Badosa.
Holly DeRoyan. Samantha Diso. <laughs> Jason Domain. Lucas Escobar. Kevin Fahey. Erica Ethier. Brianna Killinen. Holly Rank. <laughs> Lindsay Tucker. Alana Wool. Congratulations, class of twenty twenty one. And as we welcome you into our professions, you are now not our students any longer, you are our co-workers. You are going to see Marge, myself, and Colleen out in the field. We're always watching you, remember that? Um, you always know where to find us if you need anything in the future. I have one, well you have one more important thing to do. We have to say our oath. So I'm gonna have each of the students stand together. You can all go ahead and stand. And I'm going to have you repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. OK, let, let's a little better. Come on, come on. OK, let's try that again. I do solemnly swear to abide by the radiologic technology 
code of ethics, in the performance of my duties as a medical imaging professional, that I will endeavor to practice the highest standards of quality and care, to stay current with the practice of radiologic technology, and to hold the public's health and welfare above all else in the practice of my profession. Thank you, and again, congratulations. And um, we are going to process out. We're going to do the same thing as we did coming in. We're going to do it opposite. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you. Guys, did you get that? She said, I think she said the flowers in the front are for us. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're going to process out. Alana's going to lead the way, so you're going to go backwards how you came in. And um, have a wonderful day, and thank you all for being here with us. <laughs>